Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. I promised a real quick video on what I call uh, re-ringing a carb, replacing the O-rings in a carburetor. Um, before I get into that, please like and subscribe if you think uh, these tips are helpful. Um, the first tip within a tip, though, before we get into the carburetors, um, I used to, like I said before, I used to work on cars locally and you know any secrets that I had I didn't share with anyone because I was in competition with other people right but now that I'm consider myself just a collector I'm can tell you guys everything that I've figured out okay so when it comes to these o-rings number one switch to silicone from rubber wherever you can whenever you replace an o-ring if you can do it in silicone, go for it. They last uh, indefinitely longer than a rubber O-ring does. Uh, they're much easier to install because they're stretchier. They don't rip as easy. Um, silicone is the way to go for O-rings. Number two, if you're going to be working on a lot of engines, if you're a nitro enthusiast, you have multiple vehicles you're going to be working on plenty of carbs buy them in bulk don't go buy a carb o-ring set from let's say nova rossi or something with three or four o-rings in it for five six bucks you're paying a couple bucks an o-ring no if you know you're going to be working on a lot of carburetors find the small sizes you need and buy them 50 at a time for three four bucks so now that we got that out of the way uh, pretty simple. We got a axial big block carb, the K90B, um, not the A90A, which uh, is, in my my opinion, a far superior axial carb. It's the one that came on the uh, 21RR. But anyways, we're doing the K90B. So we have here a set of new O-rings uh, for the high speed middle needle low speed and the throttle adjustment so uh just uh now be before i throw them on uh, if you know my videos you know the word molly coat um i was actually going to make a little video on how to make a little dispenser like this it comes in a big tube um but i don't like to keep going in a tube so uh, I make one of these, it lasts me probably usually about six months, uh, and then I'll make another one, but I just take a little baggie, fill it with some Molly Coat O-ring lubricant, and just snip a little on the corner, right? So just make sure it don't get dirty. I'll clean it off before I use it, right? So that's nice and clean, and then I'll just dispense my Molly Coat as I need it. So... I'm going to go ahead and douse all of these O-rings. Go ahead and get a good little chunklet there. And I'm going to work this stuff into these rings. Uh, I don't like... Um, you, you could assemble it and then throw some molly coat or some o-ring lubricant if you use green slime or whatever which green slime i i used to use green slime i i, I bet you i could pull a carburetor out of my box that i put green slime on seven eight years ago and that green slime is not so slimy anymore anyways so i'm gonna work this in here real good to make sure now the silicone you don't have to this isn't as important of a step with silicone this is immensely important with rubber o-rings but i still do it all right so we have all those nice and coated and it's pushed into real well okay so those are lubricated to install them, 
I use a pick, but you, you have to be real careful. Now, again, because I'm doing silicones, these are going to be so much easier than if I was doing the equivalent rubber O-rings. Uh, there's only uh, two main sizes and then an, ex uh, a, an extra tiny size for the small one on the middle needle. So grab one of the larger red ones. And what I like to do, if you do it um, from the side with the slot, you're kind of going to kind of get it stuck in the slot as you try to put it on. So come from this way, from the edge of the slot. I'll kind of hold it in place with my thumb and take my pick and just kind of wrap it and come on wrap it around and then I'll roll it right down to where it goes so that is our o-ring on our high speed these middle needle you, you got to come in from the low side and roll them all the way down to where they go. This first one will find its spot and then when you come in with the second one it'll roll right over that first one because there's already one in that gully. Real careful, you don't want to rip these. Can and will happen. There we go. And then right into our slot. All right, so we got our high and there's our mid. Go ahead and knock out the uh, idle adjustment. And one right there. Now, like I said before, you don't want to put them on and then just put some molly coat on the outside. But I do put molly coat on the outside before I install it. This tiny one is sometimes a pain and you got to be really careful with it. The smaller they are, the easier they rip. All right, so that is our needle set with new rings. So what I'm going to do now is I'll install them with a nice layer on the rings on the outside of the rings. This helps them from snagging on the way in and also is an extra layer of protection. All right, yeah, so once that catches, I can feel that is a nice, firm grip that that has. Again. Always coat them on the way in. Touch it and give it a spin. Now, a little something I also like to do if we're going to do this right, right. Oh, that felt so good going in. Um, where is it? Do I have it handy? I like to take uh, a light machine oil 
and add a drop to these low needle threads. They can, uh, this one looks good, but these can get rusty. So um, I always like to just throw a drop of machine oil on these uh, low end threads. And as I screw that in, I can feel that that feels really good. Got a good, firm feeling to the spin. You don't, you don't want it to just spin freely. You want to feel that O-ring gripping. All right. Now, our high-speed needle has your finger adjustment. So, um, you want to O-ring... You lubricate your O-ring before you put this on or else it's going to be pretty tough to get to. So, good lube on there. It's going to come in from the top. And where's the flat spots? Now, the thing with this needle, for it to... Because you use the bottom of the plastic. The bottom of the plastic lines up with this line. And that's your base needle settings. Okay. For that to be correct, the needle, the metal, and the plastic at the top have to be flush. If the needle's sticking up or if the plastic is sticking up, it's not going to be your... And again, you don't need to be at base it's going to be rich at base. But if you need to find base, um, make sure you make sure the top of this is level so that the bottom of it will give you a correct reading for uh, the base needle settings. Not a bad practice to go ahead and throw a drop of machine oil on those threads as well. All right, flush up top, and then we screw it right to the line, and now top is at base settings. Our last one to install is the idle stop screw. Why did I just now think of exactly what that's called? I like to know the exact names of things. It bugs me if I can't think of it. So good lube on there. And we'll come on in with this one. All right, set that to give us about a one, one and a half millimeter, maybe on a carb like this, maybe a touch more uh, gap. And that's about it. Uh, these carburetors flush everywhere is base settings. So... Perfectly flush on the low, perfectly flush on the mid, and at the line for the top speed. So that is a freshly ringed carburetor, uh, and that carburetor is going to perform flawlessly. That will not leak. Um, now, actually, if I'm if I'm going to do this right, right, we're doing a re-ring, but. I'm doing a rebuild on a carb, so if that's what I'm doing, I'm going to do it right. And if I'm doing a re rebuild on a carb, I also am going to remove the boot and molly coat it as well. So let me go ahead and knock that out real quick because we like to do things right here. So we we'll grab our one and a half millimeter. MIP driver, of course. And we will remove our boot. And we will take our Molly coat 
get a good, good amount for this. And just slather, smear. Now, I, I am skipping one step. If I am doing this totally, totally right, I would have cleaned this first. Uh, this would have been scrubbed with some uh, degreaser and a toothbrush to make sure it's absolutely clean. So right now I'm working that molly coat in. That's going to make sure that this carb boot does not dry out um, and stays nice and pliable and keeps a good airtight seal. I'm working it all around the inside, the outside, all in between those accordions. Um, the good way to get the inside is to get some on your pinky. And this for me, my other fingers are too big, but I can get my pinky in there pretty good. And that's how I get the insides, just really good. That boot is completely covered in molly coat and it is rubbed into the material so that's gonna last so now we can reinstall and one final step this is something I always do and I'm sorry I'm weird like this but I have to line up the seam in the boot with the seam in the carb the carbs always have a seam right down the center pretty much always right down the center of the the molded composite part and uh, the boots always have a seam so I will line up the seam on the boot with the seam on the carb you can't really see it but I can and it's a step that I take because I'm odd like that so now I'll reinstall and now, and, and again, we got a couple more rings here. We're, we're doing this absolutely correctly. I'm going to go ahead, uninstall the rings around the throat, and molly coat those as well. Doesn't take very long. You've, you're here, you got the molly coat out. No sense in not doing it. And again, work it in there. Don't just smear it on. You want to rub it carefully. Don't rip the O-ring, but rub it into that O-ring. And one more. And we'll be done here. Now, I promise that is the last. This, o this carburetor will be done uh, as soon as I put these two O-rings back on it all right good and worked in we'll first put on our smaller one that goes into the uh, gully into the slot there you go and then the one that seals at the neck all right now Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, there are two more O-rings and they are on the friggin' Venturi, which is gonna be a pain and not wanna come out. Let's see. We're doing this right. So we're gonna do every last one of the O-rings on this thing and the Venturi rings are part of that. Holy crap, that one's, I think this one's, there we go. Now look, this thing don't even have uh, O-rings on it. Look at that. So, let's just grab another Axial compatible uh, Venturi, which looks like that one is. Let's see. Yeah, that's an Axial Venturi 7mm. Axial, uh, um, 
axial equivalent, axial compatible. That's what I said the first time. All right. Final step. Remove the O-rings from the Venturi. Carefully, these are little thin ones. And try to get it over that second one. Just going to go right in. There we go. All right. Last two, I promise. Are there any more? Maybe there's more. Maybe there's some I don't even know about. All right. Molly coat. O-rings. Squeeze. Press. Lubricate. Make them last forever and ever. All right. Now that those are properly done, number one. And number two. Look at that. Beautiful. And once that's back in the carb, we pretend we did it on that one. We got three of them here. Watch. I bet this one's got O-rings on it, and it'll come right out. Watch. Look at that. That's the way it works. But anyways, we O-ringed every place that needed them. Uh, we put light machine oil on the threads. Uh, we didn't put it on the threads of that, but we could have, and even on the mid. The, the low needle is the main one that I put the machine oil on because that's the, the only one that I've really seen have problems with getting um, getting stiff and hard in there and the threads, you know, getting rusty and messed up. So the low needle is the one I you, you want to put machine oil on, but it's not a bad practice to put it on all the threads. All right. So that's our re-rung carburetor, re-ring, re-rung, uh, got the boot lubricated the o-rings on the venturi that thing is going to perform flawlessly for a long time to come all right thank you very much for coming we'll see you next time